Two of the women who feature in their documentary, Leah Hamley and Abby Furness, join us now. Thank morning. you so much. Hi. Good morning. Thanks for coming on. I, I actually watched the first episode last night and my jaw was on the floor. I can't believe what you guys have been through. And you're not the only ones. Where are you? There were quite a lot of victims it's, here. It's actually crazy to think how many victims that there was from this from one man, that he can create so much trouble for so many people. Yeah. Uh, Abby, what makes a cyber stalker? Because we all know what a so stalker is, but what makes a cyber stalker? So a cyber stalker is basically someone that is a stalker, but all online. So Matthew Hardy, who was the stalker, he cyber stalked us through social media, creating fake accounts, constantly harassing us, watching every single move we do. There was never a moment where I felt at peace or alone. He was constantly watching. So, oh, sorry, because it's sorry, just, I'm like that. Was just, so, what, how did, so, you don't know this guy, and he doesn't. So, how did he find you guys in the first place? We don't know. He's a complete stranger. He just kind of found us on social media. And yeah, we was one of his unlucky victims. We still don't know why. That it was never explained why there was a reason for it. So, how did it manifest itself to start with? When did you thought? When, when did you start like thinking? What, you know, what's what's happening here? Because he was masquerading as other people, or what was going on? Yeah, so he started, at first I thought it was a woman, like started messaging from a woman's account yeah. and I actually thought... Just slipping to your DMs kind of thing. Yeah, and just but a message straight away, can I tell you a secret? That was the message, um, my lips, you can't, my lips are sealed, you can't tell anyone, but it's about your family and straight away when someone messages you about your family, you, yeah. you want to know the answer yeah. like, or what, what are you going to say? Well, why do you think you two were targets? Do you, do you share a lot on social media? I mean, I love social media, I share all the time, but do you think that you were targets because you're big sharers? Or... Yeah, I think both of us, like, we didn't know each other until this has all happened, but we're both very happy, free, like, family orientated, want to be with our friends all the time and... Social. Yeah. Like, social people. We post it. And, like, ha like, to have a good time, like, enjoy being around each other's company with our family and friends, and I think that was the sole um, target for Matthew to destroy that. But... And it's, none of this is obviously your fault. Mm. But if... I guess my question is, if you ignore it, does it go away? No. Right? No, it so, just got so, worse. Right, so what... How, how did that happen? So, because presumably, if someone slides into your DMs and you just ignore them, then... Yeah, they, they do normally go away. So I actually spoke to my mum about this and I said, what should I do? I've got this really weird message, but it was late at night, yeah. like half 11, I think it was. Um, and she said, oh, just ignore it and block the account. But then I woke up in the morning, I had 63 accounts. Oh, and He was pretending to be you. I had, yeah, I had 63 fake accounts add me, all from him, and then him wow. pretending to be me, and that's just within 24 hours. So he totally takes over your life, and 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 it's the not knowing. You don't yeah. know if there's a gang, you don't know if there's a man, you don't know if there's a woman, you don't know, you know, you, you're out, you're looking behind your shoulder all the time, and your mum has been fantastic <laughs> through all of this, hasn't she? Yeah, yeah, she's my rock. I I mean, yeah, there were times when she had to escort you even to go out on a night time, weren't there? Yeah, yeah, they actually come out, um, my mum and dad, together because they actually said, don't let this person win, like, this is what they want. They want you to stay at home and be sad, like... And at the time, I thought it was a girl in my town. I didn't know that he's a million miles away, he's sitting behind his computer screen. In your head, are you thinking this is someone I know? Who's yeah. Who's, like, being 100%. petty and jealous or whatever? Yeah, we accused our friends, our families, oh, our work wow. colleagues. Like, it just ruined relationships with everyone because we couldn't trust anyone and we didn't expect the stalker to be miles away. Sure. We thought it was someone very close to us because right. they seemed to know very little details. They, they knew, like, who I went to school with when I was 13. Yeah. And didn't your friend get married? Was he, somebody's friend got married and then he actually messaged yeah. the um, bride to yeah. say that you were having a relationship with the groom. Yeah, but that was when he was on bail, so... That... He did that on bail? Yeah. yeah, that was right at the end. Did um... your friend believe you, you know? Did, you, did, she, did she believe your story? Or... Yeah, yeah, but obviously it's still... It's embarrassing. Yeah. Like, even now it's still embarrassing because right. you still have to live with them things that he's been saying and the inappropriate things that he's been saying to people. He really got off on causing drama, didn't he? He really got off on having the power of causing drama. I mean, Abby, what sort of dramas did he cause for you in your life? It was absolute chaos. Like, my whole life got completely turned upside down. He ruined my relationship with my boyfriend and completely severed my relationship with my boss. How did he do those things? So, um, he ended up 
kind of ruining my relationship with my boyfriend because he planted a seed in my boyfriend's head saying that I cheated on him. Right. He created fake accounts to message my boyfriend, um, even including little details like, oh, she was in the nightclub, she was wearing this. Mm, yeah, he knew everything. Like, he would even know what colour was on my nails when I was going out. Yeah. All through social media and Instagram with my boss. He completely trashed my relationship with him. I loved my job. I loved working as an entertainer, singer, dancer. Uh -huh. And um, Matthew pretended to be me and started sending my boss explicit pictures of me. Oh, my God. Flirting, creating this sexual relationship between us. Yeah, it was And that. there was really nothing. It was always that... <laughs> That, that seed of doubt that he just wanted to plant. Like, he even hacked my emails as well, so he knew when I was going to be at a place and would message people that he also would know that would be at that place and tell them things that I would be there and basically flirt with them but pretending to be me. So at what point did you think, right, OK, it, this is really scary now, I, I need to get the police involved? And, and, and what did they say, Abby? There was um, this one night when I was home with one of my best friends. It was the night before I was meant to fly to Ibiza because I wanted to get away from all of the drama. So I was at home on my, um, with my friend and I got this text that said, if you go to Ibiza, beware, I'm going to hurt you, not in a physical way, in other ways. And it just scared me so much. He, he said, I'm going to come get you. And just all of these threats, it just built up that night and I was so scared because I thought, oh my gosh, is, is he going to stop me from getting to the airport? Mm -hmm. Is he going to meet me in Ibiza at the airport? Is he going to stop me this evening? Is he outside? All these things went through my head and of course I didn't know that he was from afar. I thought he was very close. Sure. So I called the police. Um, I called them on 999 and I said that I needed help and that I'd been getting these threats and that I was scared. I received a phone call maybe 20 minutes later that just said, do you think you're in immediate danger? Um, and they said that they didn't think I was in immediate danger and they mm -hmm. asked me this question. They said, do you really think we should come? And it made me feel really little and yeah. small. Yeah. And I felt silly for even calling the police. And I just felt trapped, like, there is no way out. This is going to go on forever. What did they say to you, Leo, when you got the, the police? I actually reported it within 24 hours of my first message because yeah. it was so severe and it was so bad. By the end of the 24 hours, he had messaged probably about 50 people and he had set up fake WhatsApps um, using my pictures, they would unuse my friends' pictures and message people and say that they needed help and that they was in urgent trouble and creating that, that worry for, for someone. And I reported it straight away and they actually told me that because there's no threat or harassment at this time, that I should go to um, action fraud to report it. So, I mean, uh, so uh, December 2019, Cheshire PC Kevin Anderson got involved. He was given the case. Good old Kev. <laughs> Your hero, really, wouldn't Things then obviously yeah. take a turn. So how... So the police then started taking it seriously, and then how did... How did it get caught? Um, through... I sent Kev that. I said, I've got a, a few pages of evidence, if you want them. A few? And, <laughs> and yeah, I sent him you this know, file. Would. It was, like, 700 pages. Yeah. And you documented absolutely everything. <laughs> absolutely again. everything. And you, so you've got a legal background, yeah? Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'd done it as in... I would as, like, a court bundle, and i literally done it from an index to... And everyone... Everything had a page number. But it was that thing... Like, when I went, to, I went to the police station, actually, and I went in there with that file with my mum, crying my eyes out and saying, please, can you help me? I don't know what to do. I'm so scared. And they said, you need to go home and report it again online. But well done, you. Well done, you. Well, he, he has been caught and he's been sentenced to nine years in prison. Now, you never knew who this man <laughs> no. was, OK? What yeah. was it like when you finally found out that was the guy that was ruining your life? I couldn't believe it. I went to court for the day of sentencing um, to read out my victim impact statement. Um, I couldn't, like, he couldn't even look up at me. Like, you've done this. Yeah. You've tried to ruin every relationship, all my family, my friends, and you can't even look up. He had all that power. Yeah. And then Matthew Hardy, at the end of it, just looked very weak. He had nothing, yeah. yeah. And then... It's crazy. Did yeah. you ever get to the bottom of why he did it? No. I still always think about that. Like, it yeah. haunts me. Yeah. 
and I don't mean to be the person that's like, why me? But I mean, yeah. why? Well, I, I, I well absolutely within your would say that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I wouldn't wish it on someone else. But, yeah, but, but, but why? The fact you were sent. So no oh, idea. No, no idea. No sorry. No, he never said anything. No, nothing. No nothing. Just quickly, what what have you taken away from the documentary? That cyber stalking is a real cr crime, and it should be taken seriously. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, people need to be heard, and if people are ever going through something like this. Their friends, family, and people around them need to believe them. Thank you. Leah, Abby, thank you for sharing your thank story. You. Yeah, uh, welcome. Thank you for having us. The, replies, the Kent Police said, Kent Police is protecting vulnerable people department said, we take every report, uh, reported incident of stalking seriously as part of our commitment to tackle violence against women and girls. Cyber stalking in particular can be difficult and complex. We treat these cases with the seriousness they deserve, and whilst ensuring those affected are given advice on how to stay, stay safe online, protected from any further harm. Cheshire Police got in touch and said, uh, Cheshire Police, who led the case against Hardy, said, although Hardy has now been held accountable for his atrocious actions, we recognise some of his victims felt they didn't get the service they deserved over the years. Well, good and old that, Kevin in the end. only truly <laughs> apologise, absolutely. Yeah. Um, can I Tell You a Secret is out today on yeah. Netflix. Yeah, you did Thank really you, well in the Abby. documentary, ladies. Hopefully that yeah. helps at least one person. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. You should be proud of yourself. Really <laughs> proud you. of yourself there.